Important developments over these past 24 hours, as we said, that are likely to have pleased Vladimir Putin. It was just last night at this time, our friends at the New York Times reported President Trump discussed pulling the United States from NATO on multiple occasions last year. Major parts of the United States government, as you're aware, remain closed tonight as the longest shutdown in our history is about to enter its 26th day. And tonight, our closest ally across the Atlantic is regrouping while it decides on nothing short of the future of its economy and culture. Earlier today, the British Parliament resoundingly rejected Prime Minister Theresa May's plan for Britain to leave the EU. While it was expected to fail, not like this, not by a margin of 230 votes, making it the most lopsided major vote in the modern history, i.e. post-World War I, of Great Britain. After today's vote, May called on members of Parliament to find some sort of a path forward. It is clear that the House does not support this deal, but tonight's vote tells us nothing about what it does support. Nothing about how, nothing about how or even if it intends to honour the decision the British people took in a referendum Parliament decided to hold. And people, particularly EU citizens who have made their home here, and UK citizens living in the EU deserve clarity on these questions as soon as possible. No one quite does understatement like the Brits. The New York Times reports tonight that with no clear consensus forward, more radical solutions are gaining momentum. Quote, one group of lawmakers is campaigning for a repeat referendum, which could potentially reverse the decision to leave the EU. Another favors leaving the bloc as planned March 29 without a withdrawal agreement, the so-called hard Brexit. In light of today's news, we are so fortunate to have with us tonight Nicholas Kristof, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for The New York Times. Nick, for members of our audience who may not understand its importance, why is it important to all Americans what happened in the House of Commons today? So if Britain pulls out with a hard Brexit, uh, then there will be disarray and a, a huge blow to the British economy and to the European economy at a time when those economies and indeed the world economy are weak. And that is going to have ramifications across America as well and around the world. But beyond that, you know, the European Union was put in place not fundamentally just as an economic measure, but really as a security architecture to avoid a repeat of the two world wars. And in a broader sense, what we're seeing right now being challenged is this architecture that a bunch of very smart strategists put in place 70 years ago. Uh, the UN, uh, the, 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 what became the European Union, um, trade organizations, NATO, uh, to try to prevent global chaos and, and, and further wars. And uh, you sort of alluded to this early on, but Russia and China have been trying to undermine this sure. architecture all along because they've worked so much to the American advantage and to the West's advantage over the decades. And um, now they are being dismantled by our own side. Yeah, indeed. I don't want to get too cute about this in a TV way, but why isn't this a great night to be in the Kremlin? The NATO alliance, uh, talk of the U.S. pulling out, uh, our longest alliance, the special relationship between the U.S. and the U.K., um, American upon American, our politics lays broken by the side of the road, all of these things together. That's right. And, and both Russia and China have made the argument that, well, democracy may look nice, but it fundamentally doesn't work. It doesn't lead to efficient outcomes. It doesn't lead to a nation's strength. And indeed, you look at uh, Britain and a country and an economy on the abyss. You look at America, where a government is shut down and is in complete chaos. You look at France, uh, Italy, both with huge problems of their own. Uh, Germany is, has, a, has a much weaker leader uh, or is about, to, is about to assume a weaker leader. And uh, they're more able to make those arguments now than they were a year or two ago. And uh, I, you know, for those of us who think that we fundamentally do have the right kind of government and the right structure, uh, it's really sad to see our side enabling 
Russia to make those arguments more compellingly in ways that will disadvantage our government and disadvantage our economy and our societies perhaps for years to come. The one scientific experiment in American history that we reference more than any other on this broadcast is the famous frog boiling experiment. Yeah. The slow death of our friend the frog. It's my contention that we've yet to grasp the impact of the headline Friday night in your newspaper that an American president, because of his actions and words, did enough to trigger an inquiry on whether or not he was a witting or unwitting tool of a hostile foreign power. When do you think that's going to start sinking in to the rest of us? It was so staggering to even to, to, to see that in the newspaper. Uh, I mean, I, I Instagrammed it because it was so incredible to see that. But at the end of the day, I mean, whether it's witting or unwitting, it's the case. I mean, there is no doubt. I don't know whether President Trump thinks he's doing this on behalf of the Kremlin, but his policies are clearly uh, benefiting the, the Putin. I mean, if Putin wanted to create arguments to undermine the U.S. to undermine Britain, to undermine the Western order, then he would be seeking to shut down the U.S. government for a while. He'd be seeking to support the Brexit campaigners. He'd be seeking to undermine the U.N. He'd be, seek he'd be talking about uh, withdrawing from NATO and collapsing this NATO that has stood up to Russia all along. So he'd be doing pretty much exactly what President Trump has been doing. Is that witting, unwitting? I don't know. But is it serving Putin's interests? Absolutely. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.